everyone, and welcome to our Sparks Global presentation entitled Enterprise Architect and Archimate for Strategic Planning. Uh, it's a great pleasure to have everyone here, and uh, it's uh, great to have uh, Gillian uh, join us tonight and or uh, this morning, depending where you are in the world. And uh, that's the uh, hi, Gillian. It's lovely to hear from you, and uh, it's uh, great that we can. Uh, run these webinars at a nice social safe distance of half a world away and uh, be presenting together. So uh, it's uh, lovely. Uh, tonight and uh, today we're going to uh, be talking about uh, Archimate and it's a topic that's uh, very popular and lots of people have expressed a great deal of interest in it. Uh, the Sparks Global encompasses all the Sparks companies from around the world that facilitate services, support, localization, training, mentoring, and much, much more. And um, it's all around the Sparks tooling, uh, be that uh, Enterprise Architect, ProLaborate, or the Pro Cloud Server. And uh, we have a number of very talented people, including Gillian, uh, based all around the world that can help and support you uh, to I get training and consulting around Enterprise Architect, Pro Cloud Server, and Pro Labrate. So, if the content today or in any of the uh, webinar series um, videos piques your interest, then please reach out to Spark Services in your region and they'll be more than happy to help. And you can find their contact details on sparksystems.com slash partners slash sparks services.html. So my name's Scott Hebbard, I'm the Communications Manager here at Spark Systems and I have over two decades of experience in ICT and multimedia marketing and uh, I conduct many of the product demonstrations and look after the community side and some aspects of marketing here at Spark Systems. Gillian Aidens uh, is the Director at Spark Services UK, so one of the Spark Services organisations that I spoke about previously. Uh, and Spark Services UK is the authorised service partner for Spark Systems in the UK and Northern Europe. So Gillian started uh, Joint Honours Mathematics and Computer Science at Glasgow University and is a chartered IT professional member of the British Computer Society. Gillian was one of the first adopters of UML and Spark Systems Enterprise Architect in the UK, uh, using Spark's Enterprise Architect from a version two onwards. So. Uh, been using it even longer than myself. Uh, she's uh, an expert in BPM and Archimate industry standard notations and Gillian currently provides formal training consulting services uh, to a wide range of organisations. She has considerable experience in uh, software project management analysis and design techniques and can assist clients with adoption of processes, tools and technologies. So at the end of this presentation, if you want more help around Enterprise Architect, BPMN or Archimate, please feel free to reach out to Gillian and she would be happy to help. So the agenda today, I'm going to briefly talk about how to submit questions. I'm going to hand over to Gillian who can look at how to create a capability map, a heat map and demonstrate Archimate look at a Kanban diagram and how to track implementation. And at the end, we'll have Q&A with the audience. Please note that audio is muted for all participants. You'll be able to type questions to the host. And if we can't answer all questions live, we'll follow up offline and publish the uh, Q&A on the Spark Systems website, along with many of our other webinars. Uh, simply use go to, enter the text into the text box and hit send or hit enter on the numeric keypad and that will come through to myself and uh, we'll ask those questions at the end of the session. But right now I'd like to hand over to Gillian that's going to present on uh, Enterprise Architect and Archimate for Strategic Planning. So uh, over to you and uh, looking forward to the presentation. Thank you, Scott, and thanks for such a, a lovely introduction. In my presentation today, I'm going to focus on how Enterprise Architect can be combined with Archimate to facilitate strategic planning. Firstly, for those of you who are perhaps new to Archimate, I thought I'd do a quick review of this industry standard, which is becoming ever more popular throughout the UK and Europe and other regions of the world.
Archimedes is a standard developed and maintained by the Open Group, who are an independent technology consortium. Archimedes is a graphical notation for creating enterprise architecture models. It's typically used by enterprise architects, solution architects, business architects, infrastructure and data architects. As you can see, the latest Archimate version 3 framework incorporates the three core layers, business, application and technology. The business layer allows us to model our, how our business operates, the organisation structure, business processes and functions internally, and the services and products that we offer to our customers and partners. The application layer lets us document our application landscape, understand how applications support our business processes and functions, and think about the interfaces and dependencies that exist between our applications. The technology layer allows us to catalogue all of our infrastructure, our hardware, system software and networks, and demonstrate how these support each of our applications. With version 2 and version 3 of Archimate, various extensions have been added to this framework. The physical elements allow us to model equipment, materials and facilities. Implementation and migration elements allow us to plan our projects, identifying work packages and deliverables, and plan our migration from current to target architecture states. Motivation elements allow us to justify projects by identifying stakeholders, their drivers, goals and high-level requirements. And finally, strategy elements, which will be the focus of this presentation, allow us to express strategic thinking and facilitate strategic decision-making and planning. Archimate is very closely aligned with the Open Group's architecture framework, TOGAF. As you can see from the colour coding on these diagrams, the Archimate notation maps to the TOGAF architecture development method and allows us to create all of the deliverables required at each phase. TOGAF, of course, has become very widely used throughout the IT industry and Archimate allows us to capture and communicate TOGAF concepts visually. Our focus today is on the strategy elements of Archimate. So firstly, we're going to create a capability map. Archimate strategy elements are located on the motivation toolbox. You can see the motivation elements in the top page of the toolbox and the strategy elements in the page below. So for our capability map, we need to create an Archimate motivation diagram. In the new diagram dialog, select Archimate as the technology on the left-hand side and motivation as the diagram type on the right. The good news is that Archimate is built into all editions of Enterprise Architect, professional, corporate, unified and ultimate. A capability map comprises a hierarchical view of all of your organization's capabilities. Capabilities articulate the strategic abilities of an organization. These provide a high level view of both current and desired competencies, each of which will deliver significant business value. For our example project, we're developing a capability map for a fictional company known as Flower Power, who grow and distribute fresh flowers. We've just given a little segment of the capability map here. Of course, the map would cover all aspects of the business, including 
flower cultivation as well. You can see um, that we've already detailed the capabilities in sales and marketing. Against each of these capabilities, we have recorded um, a tagged value, which is a custom property to show the maturity level of each of our capabilities. So in telesales, we feel that we have a high level of maturity. In website sales, it's medium. And digital marketing is an area where we feel our maturity level is much lower. Perhaps it needs some attention. How did we define this custom property? Well, from the configure ribbon in the reference data panel, we can open the UML types dialog and select the tagged value types page. And here we can define our own custom properties. You'll see that maturity level has been defined as an enum, which means that it's got a number of predefined values. In this case, low, medium and high, and the default value that we have selected is medium. With our custom property defined, we can easily manually add that to our, each of our capabilities as we create them in the model. I'm going to start now populating the customer care capabilities. So I'm going to create a new capability using the toolbox um, to represent the customer account management capability that we have in Flower Power. And then in the tags page of the properties window, I can manually add our maturity level. And you'll see that that defaults to medium, but I can select this and using the drop down list, um, I can change it to low, medium or high. Of course, it takes time and effort to manually add tags to each of the capabilities as we create them. So an alternative approach would be to create a template diagram. A template diagram can be of any type. So we have created one using an Archimate motivation diagram, um, but actually it could be any diagram type at all. I'm simply going to add the generic element that I require, so capability, onto the template. And again, I will manually add the maturity level tag value to this template element. I'll now save the diagram. And now I've got to let Enterprise Architect know where the template diagram resides. This can also be done from the configure ribbon in the reference data panel, but this time choosing the settings button and selecting project template package. I can then navigate through to find the package that contains my template diagram and click OK. Now going back to the capability map, I can continue to add additional capabilities. So we'll add another capability for corporate account management. And you'll see that this time, the maturity level has been automatically added into the model. Let's add one more to represent our customer support capability. Uh, uh, 
it's very good practice to create relationships between our high level capabilities and our more detailed capabilities. So I'm going to use the aggregation relationship in the model and drag from the high level customer care capability to each of the detailed capabilities. These relationships provide us with traceability and a great way of exploring that traceability is to open the traceability window. So from the start ribbon, I go to the design button and choose to open traceability. And now when I select the high level customer care capability, I can see each of the detailed capabilities appear. If I select one of the detailed capabilities, I can see that it's contained within customer care. Of course, nesting is a great way to represent this containment relationship as it's very intuitive for all stakeholders. I'm just going to make sure all my capabilities are the same height and width. And then I'm going to drag the detailed capabilities inside my high level capability. And you'll notice that Sparks EA automatically hides the aggregation relationship but it's still there in the model in the background and I can still see the relationship in the traceability window. Finally, let's bring this capability map to life with a legend that will turn the diagram into a heat map. I've pre previously created a legend and I'm going to drag and drop it on from the project browser. If we go into the properties for the legend, I can provide it with a suitable name. I can filter the legend to my tagged value that I created earlier. So select maturity level as the tagged value. And then enter the possible values associated with maturity level, low, medium and high and associate a different color coding with each. So low will appear in white, medium in light blue, and high in a darker color. Now the magic occurs when we tick apply auto color at the top of the dialog. And then when we say okay, our traceability map is color coded to show our level of maturity. This capability map allows senior managers at a glance to understand the current assessment of capabilities and to determine which need our investment. So typically that would be the capabilities with a lower level of maturity. For each of these capabilities, we can create a child composite diagram. So for example, if we right click on digital marketing, we can create a new child diagram. Um, we can either create a composite diagram or select an existing composite diagram. Since I've created one earlier, we'll select our digital marketing strategy diagram and click OK. You'll notice there's a lovely new feature in Enterprise Architect 15.1 where we can see the sub diagram without having to actually navigate to the diagram. But we're going to um, double click on this capability and navigate down to its sub diagram. The little infinity symbol in the bottom right hand corner tells us that there's an attached or associated sub diagram. So this is our digital marketing strategy diagram and this diagram is used to define the strategy that we have devised to either improve an existing capability or even to create a new capability for our organization. The strategy view documents the resources and the courses of action associated with each capability. Resources represent assets owned or controlled by an organization. 
These could be financial, for example, uh, cash or investments, physical, for example, plant, equipment or land or property. They could be intangible. Examples might be copyrights, trademarks, reputation, credibility, or of course, human resources, skills, know-how and motivation. I'm just going to add another resource into this model to represent the digital marketing expertise that exists at Flower Power. And of course, connect that to the capability with an assignment relationship. Next, we can think about the courses of action that we might take to either develop or improve the capability. And these could be either strategic long-term plans or tactical short-term plans. Let's add a couple of courses of action to this model. We could perhaps develop a training program. And once that's developed, we might then wish to deliver that training program. We can then create a realised relationship from our capability to each of those courses of action that help us to implement or improve that capability. And that completes our digital marketing strategy diagram. The relationships that we are creating within these models are really important and it's nice to be able to visualise all the connections that exist between elements in our model. A great way to do this is using the relationship matrix. So from the design ribbon, I can select the matrix button to open the relationship matrix and choose the strategy matrix profile that I created earlier. This populates our matrix with all of the capabilities down the left hand side as the source elements and the courses of action across the top are target elements. And you'll see that we've set the link type to realization. And whenever a realization relationship exists, we'll see a little green arrow appear in the matrix. So it's a really succinct way of understanding what relationships exist within the model. We can also go to the options and set the little check boxes to highlight any source elements without relationships and to highlight target elements without relationships. And this fills in any empty columns in pink and empty rows in blue. And this might help us to spot gaps in our model or areas that we need to further develop. You can, of course, right click in any of these segments on the matrix to add a new relationship into the model as well. Now that we have our strategy in place, we need to start planning the timescales and the order in which each of our courses of action might be implemented. A roadmap is a great way of doing this. So I've created a roadmap. Um, this diagram can be any type of Archimate diagram. You simply right click on the background of the diagram and open up the roadmap options. And you'll see right at the top, you can tick a little button to enable the roadmap on the diagram. You can give it a suitable title 
and you can choose the units that you wish to use. Um, so we've chosen quarterly for our strategic planning effort. You can also move the little space bar here to um, change the spacing on the diagram and you can set a start date for your roadmap. One of the really nice things you can do on a roadmap is to use a legend for phase colours. This is a little checkbox down in the bottom left hand side of the diagram. So if I tick that and then add a legend into the, the diagram, I can split each of these courses of action into separate segments, a segment for planning and one for implementation. You could have as many segments as you wish and each can have a different colour associated with them. And again, remember to tick the little box at the top right to apply the auto colour. And this partitions each of our courses of action into separate segments. And I can then just drag each of these segments to indicate how much time is spent in planning and how much in implementing the course of action. Of course, if there were no planning required, I can right click on the course of action. I can hide a roadmap segment so I could take the planning out altogether. So these allow us to represent each of our courses of action and think about the order that we'll tackle each in. And as we've added a few more into our model, we can go back and add those into the roadmap as well. So developing our training program, I can drag that on as a link and also delivering the training program as well. And I can position them and resize them to indicate when each of those will take place and how much effort's involved in each. You'll notice that I've also added some swim lanes to this diagram just to partition up uh, the courses of action. Again, right click on the background of the diagram and go to swim lanes and matrix. And here I've set up a swim lane for sales and marketing, giving it a nice color as the background and another one for customer care with a slightly different color um, and then added sub lanes for each of the more detailed capabilities. This gives us our overview of how we want to approach our courses of action. But many organizations do like to take an agile approach and a Kanban diagram can be a great way of scheduling and tracking different elements, in this case, courses of action as they're implemented and delivered. So to create a Kanban diagram, I would open up the new diagram dialog, choose the Kanban technology, and we have simply chosen to use a basic Kanban for our diagram. I can then right click on the background of the Kanban and open up the Kanban dialog. And you'll see this allows me to then set nice colors for the background of each of the swim lanes and also to bind the Kanban to an element property in our model. So this Kanban is bound to the phase property of each of our elements. So if I were to select a course of action in the Q lane, we'll see that the phase property is set to Q. Um, this one to in progress and this one has been completed. And dragging and dropping these courses of action from one swim lane to another will automatically update the phase property for us. Going back into the Kanban dialog, we've also chosen to use the Kanban drawing style, which is a nice modern look and feel. And we've ticked various segments to include certain information 
in our model. I can drag and drop my new courses of action onto the Kanban as well. They will initially be added into the backlog. And then as we progress, I can reflect the progress that we've made. So from the um, construct ribbon, I can open up the resources window and for each of our courses of action, I can assign different team members to work on this activity and I can reflect the percentage complete. And this allows me to understand progress at quite a high strategic level. And just to reflect that these elements that are appearing on this Kanban are the exact same elements that we created in our strategy diagram and used on a roadmap. So if I right click on this course of action and say find in all diagrams, you'll see that it appears on the roadmap and also on the motivation strategy diagram. So that's the end of today's presentation. Hopefully it's given you a flavour of the power of enterprise architect to help you with capability modelling and strategic planning. Just in case you do want to get in touch with ourselves or are interested in any of our services, I'm just going to pop our contact details up on the screen. You can see that we do EA training and consulting and workshops. Um, we have experience of delivering these courses either on site or by webinar. And as many of us are working from home at the moment, the webinar uh, are, are very popular and we have um, a whole programme of public training running at the moment. It's been uh, discounted for the next few months as people are working at home and there's some Enterprise Architect and ArcMate courses available as part of our public training programme if anyone is interested. So I'll pass back to Scott now and I'm happy uh, to take any questions that you may have. Thanks very much, Gillian. It's uh, really great to see uh, the Archimate strategic process put down in Enterprise Architect and been uh, really great to see it all come together and you make it look really easy and um, it's fantastic to see it all come together. Uh, in the very first part of the webinar, you showed a tagged value and for a capability. I was wondering if perhaps you could show what properties come out of the box with Enterprise Architect for Archimate. So if um, you could perhaps select a, a capability and show all the properties that are available uh, without necessarily creating a tagged value. Yeah, absolutely. So um, you have lots of properties available that you can set um, that are just out of the box and they appear in the properties window. Whenever you select an element, you've got the name, you've got its type and stereotype. You can have an alias, you can set up uh, keywords which are great for searching on. Um, every element in EA can have a, a status associated with it and that can be customised as well. Um, you can have things like version and phase. Uh, you can record who is the author of that element in the model. Um, complexity, if you wish. Um, and it will also record when that element was created and modified. So all those kind of standard um, properties are available straight out of the box. And then on the tags tab, you can extend that and add your own custom properties to hold whatever information you wish against any of these elements. Can you create a template that includes four or five different tagged values all at once? So Absolutely. that every time you drag it onto a diagram, it 
includes all of those? Yeah, absolutely. The template mechanism is a really simple way to automatically add custom properties to elements of different types. Um, so on my template, I created just one capability element with a single tagged value. Um, but you could have as many tagged values here as you wish. And whenever you add a capability from the toolbox, it will automatically add those into your model. It's a great way to encourage your architects to populate your model with the types of information that you wish to hold against each of your elements. Um, you can have different tag values for different element types. So I might have a maturity level for my capabilities, but if I was recording maybe uh, an application component, I might want to know who the vendor is, what the, the version of it is, um, whether it's uh, where it is in the life cycle stage. Um, so you could have different tag values for each different Arcanet element. And then when you add them from the toolbox, these uh, tags are automatically added for you. Thank you very much. We've got a question from Claude that asks, how is Archimate? aligned with something like the Zachman framework. So although this presentation looked at Archimate, Enterprise Architect does support TOGAF and UAF and Zachman framework and a number of different things. So from your experience, um, you know, how does Archimate align with something like the Zachman framework? Yeah, so uh, indeed there are a number of different architecture frameworks out there. And I think there's quite, an overlap in terms of the concepts that they uh, model and, and present. Um, so I think the terminology would be a bit different um, in Zachman and the approach is slightly different, but there's certainly quite a big overlap in terms of concepts. So you might have to do a bit of a mapping of the terminology, but you could certainly use uh, Archimate diagrams to uh, deliver some of the aspects of the Zachman framework or any of these other architecture frameworks. Thank you very much. Uh, Dean had a question about some of the roadmap items that you created and uh, wanted to know, can they be sized and positioned based on tagged values automatically or does this require script to achieve? So um, obviously you could have some uh, tagged values holding information about start dates and end dates and different segment positions. Um, perhaps you could correct me if I'm wrong, Scott, but I don't think there's an automatic way to pick up that information and reflect it on the roadmap. I think you have to either manually resize to position the roadmap elements or as uh, Dean suggested, a very good suggestion, you could write a script to automatically look at that information and position these elements on the roadmap. So on the roadmap, it's manual, but uh, if you have a um, uh, some of the resourcing diagrams that show uh, the start and end date, then that can be automated via the calendar. So. Uh, we might provide some links to some of that information, but for this particular roadmap, yes, it is manual, um, as you suggested. Uh, but those elements are being modelled, so they can certainly contain start and end dates and can contain a lot of information in the tagged values and properties, which can convey uh, through notes and properties and tagged values much more than a typical um, static diagram might be able to provide. So, uh, Thanks for that. I'm conscious of the time, so I'll just uh, maybe have a look at a um, uh, a few additional questions. So Marcus asks a question, how do you put the additional text information in the diagram? So, um, and I'm not sure whether he's talking about using the notes field or whether he's talking about putting text on the diagram itself. So perhaps you could talk about both of those elements. Um, yeah, so obviously every element that appears on a diagram has a, a name. Um, you can edit that through the properties window right at the top here. Or if you click um, the F2 uh, shortcut key, 
um, you can do an edit inline and type the name that way. Um, if you do want to provide additional textual detail behind the capabilities, you can type that into the notes. So you could have a description there. And that information, or all of the information, in fact, in the properties dialog, including your custom properties and your notes, your textual descriptions in the notes, can all be extracted out when you generate documentation out of Enterprise Architect. So we could generate a um, Word document with the diagram and all the textual descriptions and custom properties and pull that all out into a report that can be handed to senior managers. Or if we generate an HTML report that could be put on your intranet and made available to managers to browse. Or even better, use a ProCloud server and collaborate and make all of this information available to all the business stakeholders through um, a browser such that they can see the live model and they can see all the latest information. And they'll be able to use um, all the navigation that you've built into the model as well. So the hyperlinks or um, these um, ability to double click and navigate down into more detailed diagrams, all of that um, will be available either in an HTML report or by using a uh, Prolaborate. Thank you. And I think where you've got the capabilities and the bullet points listed on text, that's a simple text element. So uh, if you bring up the toolbox or press the space bar, you can very easily add text uh, um, onto a screen and make changes and edit it. And you'll see that it's also available in the notes window. And uh, yes, um, the text element and the diagram notes and diagram legends are all listed under common under the toolbox there. So you, uh, you're psychic and knew where I was going. So <laughs> thank you very <laughs> so, much. So these are, are just um, images that you can import into EA. Um, and this is just some textual information which you can resize and uh, make it look nice and pretty and colourful. It's often a good idea actually to have um, a landing page within your model that's quite nice and graphical um, and you can use hyperlinks to navigate off to various diagrams within within the model or use a navigation cell to, to make it look a bit prettier and that's uh, all very easy to do. But um, yes, the, the common area of the toolbox allows you to add notes and uh, legends and, and images to any diagram at all. Thank you very much. Uh, Gareth had a question saying, can you explain the difference between a capability and a business function or a business process? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, so the, the key difference really is the level of abstraction. Um, a capability is obviously at a strategic level. It's describing what um, the, the business can do and what the business desires to do. Whereas uh, business processes and business functions are more at the operational level. So they're describing how um, the organization implements or realizes the capability. So it's quite common to have um, one or more business processes or business functions actually realize um, a strategic uh, capability. Excellent. Uh, there's a question from Saeed that says, uh, what's the best way to create reports or presentations to senior management regarding the strategy out of this effort? And how easy is it for senior managers to get their um, questions regarding strategy answered using EA? So I've got lots of ideas there, but uh, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll let you uh, have a, uh, a first go at that, Gillian. Okay, so I, I would say the, the best possible way would be to use Prolaborate because that can have a really nice graphical dashboard as a front end for senior managers. They can then navigate down to your capability maps and um, roadmaps and so on, and, and they can view those diagrams. And you've got the ability to um, decide what information you wish to share with that particular audience and, and customise that 
and reveal just the core information without confusing anybody in the, the audience. I think Archimate is intended for that audience and its notation is relatively straightforward and simplistic. Uh, and I would always uh, advise um, using maybe even just a subset of Archimate so that um, your, your business uh, stakeholders get used to that notation and, and don't find that um, too much of an overload in terms of uh, graphical uh, notations. Um, of course, even from the core enterprise architect um, tool, you can generate your own um, Word documents or PDF documents, and you can use templates to um, give it your own company look and feel um, and, and format it nicely. Um, we've got a workshop that shows you how to do that if you're interested. Um, or you could just generate a, an HTML report, which is just a, a kind of static um, view of the current model and lets you navigate through the different diagrams. Have you any other ideas, Scott? So the only other things that I was going to mention is that one of the great things about capturing some of that feedback from uh, key stakeholders and from your management team is that you can have you know, element level discussions and those discussions are then stored in the repository. Uh, so in conjunction with team review, model mail and element level discussions, you can have a discussion with senior management three months ago and all of those details and discussions are stored at an element level uh, in the model so they're not lost um, and I think especially when you've got people working from home and uh, distributed it's really great that all of that um, core intellectual property those core ideas those key discussions around um, topics between management and parts of the team can all be captured and stored in a central repository and then stored and then the only other thing I was going to add is that you know, with the Pro Cloud Server, you can make all of these models and elements available uh, to anyone with a web connection around the world. Um, and that also gives a great deal of uh, power and capability for allowing uh, senior management to be able to see these strategic uh, diagrams and to be able to discuss them and interact with them and um, engage with the material. So do you agree with that? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, and and also with ProCloud Server, you have integration with other tools like Confluence, which might be your preferred method of um, advertising these models and promoting them to other parties as well. Yes, so Confluence and Jira and SharePoint and a number of other techniques that uh, integration with ProCloud Server exists so that you can have the best of both worlds, you can have the uh, the best modeling tool in Enterprise Architect and you can you know, use existing systems that you use for some of that um, uh, feedback and integration. So uh, I think we've got all bases covered there. So uh, what I might do now is uh, just uh, wrap up. Uh, we will try to make this webinar available on the Spark Systems YouTube site within the next 24 to 48 hours. Uh, please uh, have a look at sparksystems.com slash webinars to have a look at our upcoming webinars and our back catalogue of free webinars that are available where you can learn more about the ProCloud server and about ProLaborate, about how to use Enterprise Architect for you know, managing requirements, for managing databases, for uh, Enterprise Architecture, for software development and much, much more. So, Gillian, I'd like to thank you very much for your uh, excellent presentation and for being able to uh, answer questions on the fly and almost uh, psychically know where I want you to point <laughs> on Enterprise Architect. Uh, it's been lovely to um, hear from you and there's been some feedback in the questions uh, saying that we should get you to do lots more presentations. So uh, yeah, people have uh, certainly uh, found it very, very um, powerful beneficial and uh, have found your presentation to be um, um, fantastic as well. So thank you very much from my side of the world and uh, it's been a pleasure to have you uh, present on Archimate for us today. So thank, thank you. you Scott. Thank you, it's been great to be here. And uh, with that, uh, take care, stay safe everyone.
wash your hands and uh, look after one another and uh, look forward to seeing you again in the future. Thank you and uh, have a great day. Bye-bye.